So how many smelters do you need when you're using tier 3 belts? Hey guys, thank you so much and welcome to Dragonmore Gaming. And we're giving you the tips, tricks, tools, and tactics to get the most out of your games. So for Dyson Sphere Program, yeah, I like, I like to be efficient, right? So uh, one of the things I'm doing is creating these videos around how to get the most out of, out of the different you know, resources, buildings, belts. So this particular guide is about using the tier 3 belts with smelters and how many of these smelters do you need? Because you don't want to make too few, you don't want to make too many, uh, and that's that's kind of what I've done is in, you know, I'm trying to be efficient, trying to have kind of the right number, if you will, to, to make sure that it's efficient as possible. So with that, here is the tier 3 belt guide for smelters. But before that, I got a little bonus for you guys. So this is a quick guide, or a little cheat sheet, if you will, that'll have all the different belt speeds, all the different smelter you know, recipes that you can refer back to at any time. So uh, check down in the link in the description below, and I'll have the, uh, the it's a Google Sheets that you can refer to at any time, whether you look at this video or look at the written guide, so you can always refer back to know, you know, at a, at a glance, you know, how many smelters you need for each resource. So I hope you enjoy, and with that, let's get into it. All right, so next is the Mark III belts. Now, the Mark III belts, again, carry 30 per second of any resource. So that's what we need to make our belts, you know, you know we need to use up 30 per second of whatever we're going to put on the belt. Now, to start off easy, the iron ingots are a one-to-one -one ratio. It takes one iron to one iron ingot. Uh, per second, so this one very easy calculation if the belt holds 30 you need 30 smelters for iron ingots Next is the magnets and the magnets are also a one-to-one -one ratio of one iron to one magnet But they take one and a half seconds. So they're a little bit slower production than the ingots So you'll need more smelters and you'll actually need 45 smelters in a row to fully utilize all 30 you know, per second of the ore coming in and to match the 30 magnets coming out so as you can see coming back over here that it perfectly uses doesn't stop there's no gaps uh, between the magnets and the iron ore so 45 for magnets okay so the copper ingots this is another one to one ratio so it takes one copper ore to one copper ingot so same thing again 30 smelters with a mark 3 belt okay so stone brick is another one to one ratio so checking that, so it's one stone just to one second to one stone brick. So again, with a 30 per second belt Mark III, you just need 30 smelters. All right, next up is glass. Now glass has a two to one ratio. So this will be a little different. It takes two stone every two seconds to make one glass. So it takes two stone to make one glass. So therefore you can see on the side here I have two sets of numbers now. One represents the amount of smelters you need per input resource versus how much you need total, you know, to fill out the output belt. So this, this so the way to read this is that so you need 30 rows of smelters. So 30 a row of 30 smelters uh, and that'll fully utilize a Mark III belt of 30 stone. Uh, but it only outputs half of that, right? It's a 2 to 1 ratio. So it only outputs at 15 per second. Well, the belt can hold more than that. So the second number represents the total number of smelters you'll need to fully max out that output belt. So, and that is 60. So for glass, you need 60 smelters total. And you can see I have stone coming in from the top into the smelter, outputting on the glass, and then the reverse, I have the stone coming down here, going into the smelter from the bottom, and then onto that same belt. So two belts of stone make one full Mark III 30 per second belt of glass. So a row of 30, another row of 30, 60 total for glass. Coal is another two to one ratio. So you see two coal every two seconds makes one energetic graphite. So we'll need the two to one setup again, which is 30 smelters per row and 60 smelters total to make energetic graphite as efficiently as possible. All right, next up is steel. Now steel is a three to one ratio. So three ingots to one steel in three seconds. So what this means is, is that each row, if you will, is gonna need 30 uh, steel smelters, but to get full utilization, you'll need 90 
to get a full 30 uh, per second, a full you know, Mark III belt output. So 90 smelters total. Now there's two ways to do this, and since you need three quote unquote rows of 30, uh, since it's an odd number, uh, I think you got a couple choices here about how you want to lay it out. Uh, the first way I have here is just kind of the, you know, going horizontal method. And this one, just to kind of fly over here, so this is if you have a lot of room on your planet going sideways, and you can go out like this. So again, it's uh, three Mark III belts of iron ingots equals one Mark III belt of steel. Now, what you can see I did here is that all the belts are just on top of each other going along. And when I get to 30 smelters, you can see, again, it dips down. So the last one ends, and the next one just comes down and takes its place. Now the same thing happens again after another 30. So 60 total, and that belt runs out, and that's the 30th smelter for that row, if you will. And then the next belt just comes back down again and finishes out another 30 smelters. So that's uh, one way you can do the 90 smelters, which is how I'll have them all all on one row and just make sure that you feed uh, you know every 30 with a new belt. So the second way to do steel again doing the 3 to 1 ratio you just need three rows of 30 smelters right so 30 smelters per row and 90 total so three rows now since it is an odd number so what I did here is I had two rows uh, that combine into the same belt coming back right so input from the top input from the bottom here and it combines in the middle and then I just did a separate line under it uh, as tight as I could get it I'm using the, uh, the these satellite substations for the power getting it uh, reaching across all the way over there uh, but you can make this really tight by having so the next row of iron ingots going here and then the steel coming out and again if you want it to if you want to use more of the outputs on your uh, logistics stations you have that line combine with this other line from the other two because again it's a three to one so once this belt merges into that one uh, it'll fit because that's you know the, it's a three to one ratio so all three smelter rows are going into the same belt back into the logistics station so that's how you can get uh, a, a tighter uh, build of the uh, steel doing 90 steel smelters next is high purity silicon or silicon ingots as I like to call it this is another two to one ratio. So same as before, uh, you'll need two separate rows of 30 smelters each for a total of 60 smelters for silicon ingots. Titanium ingots, another two to one ratio, two titanium ore to one ingot. So this again will be two rows of 30 smelters each. So 30 on each side and for a total of 60 smelters for titanium ingots. All right, next up is diamond, and we're back to a one-to-one -one ratio, so you just need one row of the uh, smelters. And diamond, again, is one graphite to, to one diamond, but it does take two seconds, so which is why you need 60 total smelters in a row to fully max utilize the input and the output for diamond. The next one's a little crazy. This is the alternate diamond pattern that uses the kimberlite ore, right? So this is a one to two ratio. So we're using the bottom one. So this, so the first recipe is for the graphite to the diamond is a one to one, but the alternate recipe is a one to two. Uh, so you're getting more out than you put in. So what I found is that you'll need, so it's 45 smelters for the input, right? For the kimberlite ore. Uh, to get fully used at the you know the Mark III belt, but the output is only 22.5 to be fully utilized. So there's not enough room for the output. So the best way I found it is to simply make two output belts. And as you can see, I have two sorters coming out of each smelter on the two different belts. Now if we come all the way over here to our logistics, you can see that it's again full utilization. It is a Mark III belt out of the Kimberlite ore, and it's two Mark III belts in of the diamonds. So again, uh, if you're using the alternate pattern, using the Kimberlite ore, do 45 of the smelters, and make sure that you have two output belts. And that'll be uh, 
your Mark III utilization for alternate diamond. All right, next is crystalline, crystal silicon, crystalline silicon, crystal silicon, <laughs> and that's another uh, one to one ratio. Uh, but it does require two seconds to make it. And again, this is the smelter recipe that uses the uh, the high purity or the the silicon ingots uh, to make this one in the smelter. And so, as a one to one ratio, you just need one row, and it's going to be another sixty smelters. And sixty smelters will do the the max belt utilization for making your crystal silicon. Okay, here's a big one. So the titanium alloy. Now the alloy itself takes four titanium ingots, four steel, and eight sulfuric acid to make four titanium alloy. Uh, another way to say this is it's a. Uh, I'll show the pattern here. So it's basically so 4484 or to reduce the numbers sim in a simpler form it's 1 to 1 to 2 to 1 right so just divide everything by 4 so what that means is it's a 2 to 1 it's a 1 to 1 to 2 to 1 but anyway so you'll need 45 uh, smelters at a minimum to uh, and that'll use all of the sulfuric acid for one belt uh, but it'll have excess hanging on for the steel and the titanium and the output so if you want to make it full utilization you need 90 and just to show you again coming all the way over here so that's quite a lot of smelters I don't know if you necessarily need 90 of this good I mean yeah, it depends how big you're going right but uh, but I've I've gotten just with 45 and less than you know some hanging on the uh, the other belts just because <laughs> I mean, you don't need that much. But uh, if you are using 30 titanium alloy a second, then uh, this is this is the setup you need. So you're gonna have two Mark III belts of sulfuric acid, and I do the same thing where I you know have one on top of each other. Uh, until you get to 45 and then it's just a single belt of the uh, the titanium and the steel and that will get you the full mark 3 output belt of titanium alloy and again just to share with you you come over here after 45 smelters come over here and the sulfuric acid drops down after the 45th the new sulfuric acid belt comes down and this is our hero sorter right here who's uh yeah he's working and so if you ever uh, and just to kind of quickly share if you haven't done this before so they might patch this out as far as how this works but uh just as an idea like if you delete that sorter and you try to place it manually right now it does not work it does not understand how to get in there like so how did i do that uh so because the problem is if you do it that in that order if you do the sorter last it doesn't get on there it doesn't snap but the same thing happens if you have a flat surface with the belt and you're like I have a sorter here so say this is the other way you could do it but then if you try to do this it it collides with this other sorter and it won't actually connect the belts so the only way I found to get around this just to kind of share with you guys is that you delete the sorter, you delete that belt, you have the belt connect under the second one, and again you can't place the sorter manually. So what you do is you delete the whole setup, you delete the whole smelter, and you take one of the ones next door and you do the shift copy, and then you just paste it. And the copy paste feature just for some reason lets you place the sorter there. So there you go. That's that's how you can get around that and keep everything nice and tight. Uh, if they do patch it and they don't let you do that in the future, the best thing to do would probably be just to move it over one space just to have a, a small gap there uh, so that the belt can get down and you can get their sorter on it. But for now, the, the copy-paste feature, copying the sorters over, it works great, <laughs> even if it looks ridiculous. So there you go. So again, titanium alloy, 45 for a single belt or 90 total to fully utilize all your belts all right so uh, I think that'll do it right or is there you know what 
silicon ore, it's a bonus. All right, so that'll do it for the maximum belt efficiency video. That's all the re that's not all the recipes, is it? Oh my gosh. I mean, you guys don't really want the silicon ore one, right? Okay, as a bonus, let's do the last one. This is, you will never use this. I can't think of a reason why you would, but here it is. In the smelter, you can make silicon ore out of stone at a 10 to one ratio. So you need 10 smelters to every one silicon ore you want. Okay. Um, keep in mind that it produces one and so you can still use 30 um, smelters per kind of row, if you will. Uh, but since it's a 10 to 1, it's 30 <laughs> to the ratio of 300. So 300 smelters all making silicon ore out of rocks. Um, so here's the max efficiency setup that you will never use. But here you go. 300 silicon ore and it takes so much stone that I can I can't keep up with it even with I have two logistics facilities just constantly trying to pull in stone and it is not enough you can see how fast you need 10 belts coming off of it right so it's 10 to 1 so 10 rows of 30 smelters so you can kind of see what I'm doing here is that and they all merge into a single belt and look at that silicon ore when it's has 100% uptime it will generate 30 silicon ore a second uh, so you can see I have two rows so similar to like kind of the two to one ratios I got uh, it's two rows of 30 and then in, I do the little thing where you know I drop down the conveyor belt to the next row uh, <laughs> four times and so that's uh, a row of 30 30 30 so four rows of 30 there and then they drop down so this starts the next rows four more rows of 30 and then that's eight and then the last two rows of 30 equals 10 10 rows of 30 or 300 smelters to get all the silicon ore. Again, I don't think you'll ever use this, but here you go. So that is how you can get a full belt <laughs> Mark III full of silicon ore from the smelters. Hey guys, so that's been the max belt efficiency guide for smelters. And don't forget, I have a link down in the description for a uh, Google Sheets document that you can use as a quick reference or a little cheat sheet uh, so anytime you want to figure out without having to look at a whole video again, uh, how many smelters do you need for each good? I got it, you know, got it all together there for you. So definitely check that out. Uh, and if you guys are interested, uh, I do have a Discord set up. Uh, so we hang out there, chat. Uh, let me know. I'll be dropping you know more information, more guides there. And if uh, you have questions or suggestions, you know, definitely drop me a line. So guys, this has been Max Belt Efficiency for Smelters. So remember, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.